If you want to get into the field of UX, UI, or product design, there are six main areas of competency that you must fortify if you want to land a role and be effective at your job. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth from Designer Up, helping you become a more skillful and mindful designer. The first is thinking. You'll want to start paying attention to the large and small problems that technology is trying to solve. There is usually a larger industry problem, such as how to make healthcare accessible to more people. And then there are the smaller problems, such as how can a patient easily book an appointment with their doctor using their mobile app. You can take a small step simply by observing what you're thinking and feeling and noticing whenever you use an app to try and complete a task. Every blockage, moment of confusion or relief, frustration and joy is an opportunity to explore what made it so. Write it down. Down. Write what you liked, write what you didn't like so that you can analyze it and use it later. Number two, skills. You'll need to start learning skills across a variety of disciplines. These include the overarching areas of user research, information architecture, visual design, user interface design, product strategy, and UX writing. This includes learning the theoretical concepts and terminology as well as the application by doing small assignments or exercises to reinforce them. These could be design challenges, self-directed projects, or app redesigns. These could also be course or bootcamp projects. Number three, tools. There are many different tools we use to help us do our jobs better and collaborate with each other. One of the best ones to start with is Figma. This is the UI designer's tool of choice to create mockups and prototypes at different levels of fidelity. Other tools include a project management system such as Notion to help you collect user and competitor research and other data and synthesize it into important things that you can apply to your designs and share with others. Number four, communication. It's important that you understand how to present what it is you're working on or creating so that others can understand it and see the picture that's in your mind. Oftentimes you have to frame things differently for different people that you're working with because they might not understand it the way that you do. One way to practice this is by sharing your work online and trying to explain in a concise and succinct way what you've done. I've done another video that you can check out all about how to solicit the most valuable UI design feedback on your work. You can also show your work to developers and ask them how feasible it is to create what you've designed. Work on your public speaking skills as well by joining Twitter spaces or asking questions in group sessions. Number five, selling. You'll want to position yourself correctly in the industry, create case studies and curate your body of work so that what you say you can do aligns with what you can show. There are a few different ways you can position yourself and find your niche so that you're sending the right signals to the right people and so that you can stand out from the crowd. Start by looking for the jobs that you want to have and think about what you're passionate about working on every day. Then take an honest look at your background and your work and make sure you can tie it all together. Don't be vague and don't be too general. Make it make sense in the context of you and your history and your future goals. This is where you need to start focusing less on yourself and more on your audience, understanding their needs and effectively communicating the ROI they can expect from you. Six, experience. When I say experience, I'm referring to real world working experience where you were hired to do a job involving UX or UI. If this is your first time trying to enter the field, this can be a bit tricky, but there are ways that you can leverage what you've done in the past, as well as find real projects to work on that you can include in your portfolio, such as finding nonprofits and offering your services. You can connect with developers that need designers to help them out on what they're working on. You can connect with other designers or agencies that might have work overflow. You can join a hackathon to work with others on a real project or concept, or you can work on open source projects with other designers. You can also apply to internships and apprenticeships to get more work experience. You can even start freelancing for clients and getting paid before you go after bigger roles that you might be considering. The point here is to get comfortable with the business and communication side of design, to dip your toes into team collaboration, and to start learning how to adapt to ambiguity that often comes up 
up in the workplace, that's hard to recreate yourself. It can be really hard to do this all on your own without help and not knowing if you're doing it right. So if you'd like to go through this with me, I'd like to invite you to enroll in our product design course so that you can learn all of these things and grow in a structured way with other mindful designers. I hope this helps you understand some of the areas that you can dive into and focus on, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.